Hi everybody, it's Benjamin from Benjamin Crudwig Creative Arts, and um, I heard I heard that if you wear glasses, people think that you look smarter. So I uh, definitely that's why I'm doing that today. It's not not because I don't feel like putting in contacts. Um, yeah, hi, it's been a while. This is episode 13 of Seeds of Creativity, and episode 12 was done back in July, um, mid-July actually. So it's been a couple of months since I've done a video like this, and there's lots of reasons for that. Um, the biggest one is that my Kickstarter for my Character Chronicle, which right here, um, that was really successful, and I've basically been in production mode ever since that ended. So uh, July and August were completely filled with me working on this. I'm still working pretty heavily on it, but I found a balance. So I'm, I'm doing pretty well on that front. The other reason I haven't been doing this is A, I've been streaming a lot more, and B, I didn't have any topics I really wanted to hit and cover, and I always want to make sure that I'm bringing you really good content that just is timely and, and works for us. So I thought I would bring up a topic today that is kind of a hard topic for me to talk about, but it's something that I think um, it's important for me to to talk about it and to just like kind of air out my own dirty laundry, if you will. It's not really dirty laundry, whatever. But today's topic that I want to talk about is disappointment. And I think that's, it's <laughs> just like any of the other topics in this series, is it's a very loaded topic. I think a lot of us have our own traumas and stigmas surrounding disappointment and how we feel about it and how we feel about it for ourselves, where it comes from, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So basically I want to talk today in the realm of disappointment within your art and how to combat the feelings of it. And it's, it's kind of a, it's an interesting topic to me because I think it involves quite a few things that we've already talked about, um, vulnerability, fear of failure, you know, that kind of stuff, um, the monetization of art, all sorts of things. <laughs> so yeah, I just wanted to chat about this. Um, I think all of us have felt disappointment at some point in our lives, and we all know the feeling of disappointment, whether we've disappointed somebody else or we've disappointed ourselves. As artists, I think we more often than not feel like we've disappointed ourselves. And I, I have felt disappointment this year many, many, many times. Um, the first time this year for me was when my fashion show in Vancouver was canceled and or rescheduled, but it's still like might be canceled for a while. I don't know. I don't know, but I was really, really disappointed because I thought that that would be my launching pad for my fashion career. And ever since then, I've just been kind of low key disappointed that it didn't happen and that I'm not further along in my career than I thought I would be by this point this year. And this has got me to thinking, you know, the last couple of weeks, I've been thinking about this pretty heavily. I've been really thinking about disappointment a lot. And because I I think being in quarantine for so long at this point and um, moving into a new place, a new uh, city, I thought things would be different by now, right? Like how many times have any of us said that? I thought things would be different by now whether it's about our personal lives, our career, our monetary situation, whatever it might be, I think everyone has had that feeling, has had that moment of, wow, here I am right now and I'm disappointed at where I am at. So as I've been thinking about this, I realized that so much of disappointment comes from our expectations. The expectations that we have of ourselves, the expectations that we have of others, and the expectations that others have of us. And while I think expectations are a good thing 
as far as boundaries and being able to say, here's what I expect, I think it's more important than anything to really figure out what kind of expectations you're putting on yourself or others. And I put them into two categories, realistic expectations and unrealistic expectations. I think that it's key, absolutely key in all aspects of life to try to set realistic expectations. So what is a realistic expectation? It's something that is attainable, that is within reach, within reason. So something like an expectation of, I want a million dollars by the end of the year is not necessarily a realis realistic expectation for most people. You have to take a look at where you are right at this moment, what your trajectory has been, what your trajectory has like is going towards, and then you have to decide whether or not that expectation is realistic given those circumstances. Now, that isn't to say that you can't change your circumstances. Um, maybe you have a sudden windfall of money that comes in and it puts you in a position where, okay, you can adjust your your expectations at this point. Um, maybe you have a breakthrough in a technique that you're working on in your own artistic practice and that changes your expectations of what you might be able to do. Or you meet a person at a party who has connections to a gallery or something and that changes your circumstances so that can then change your expectations. These are, you know, this whole thing about life is that it's an ever-changing and flowing thing. Circumstances change. Life changes. I don't think any of us expected this year to go the way that it did and has. So what can we do about it? Well, we can manage our own expectations and we can adjust things where necessary. So this is where I've been for the last few weeks is what are the expectations that I have of myself? What are the expectations that I have over my creative businesses? And what can I do to reach my goals? You know, what can I do to achieve my dreams? I think it's natural to feel disappointed when something doesn't necessarily go your way. But I think it's also important to not take it so personally to ourselves of like, oh, wow, I am a failure because I didn't reach this goal or I didn't meet this expectation of myself. I think I said this in a video before, but failure is feedback. You know, I think that at, at some point we need to have a check, some balances in place where we can go, wow, I didn't meet this expectation, why? Like, and then you can really take a look at it and see what it is that caused you to not be able to hit your goal or, or make that expectation a reality. Well, once you're able to slow down and stop and think about that, that can make you a better person, that can give you a, another advantage of when you make your next goal, your next expectation, you're able to set it more realistically. You know, one thing in marketing and social media management, which is one of the things that I do for a living, is that you need to create metrics that are realistic, right? So this is something like, say that you're a brand new Instagram, you've got a new Instagram following, and you say, well, by the end of the week, I want 300 followers. You don't really have any idea of how you're going to get there, what it means for your page to reach that amount. Um, like, what, what is your average follower count per day? Like, what, how many new followers do you get per day? Well, if it's five, if your average is five, then you're not gonna make 300 by the end of the week. You know, it's just, that's not going to be feasible. So you need to take stock of time and effort and all the things that go into something like a goal like that and decide, well, okay, so if five is my average per day, 
Well, then per week, that you can think that you're going to get 35 new followers per week. Well, if you really start to push yourself and work a little bit smarter, harder, or strategically, then you can maybe bump that up to, say, 40 or even 50 followers per week. That's an expectation. That's a goal. But it's that that's all that it is. It's not an end-all, be-all, like, if you don't reach this, you're fired, or if you don't, or if you excel at it and you go past it, then, wow, you don't have to work hard anymore. No, it's just a an expectation and a goal. And whether you reach it or not isn't anything. It's just you get feedback afterwards that you can then say, this worked, this didn't work, and how can I change it in the future? I think it's really, really important for us to be patient and to be kind with ourselves when it comes to these expectations. You know, I expected to have a fully fledged fashion company by the end of this year based off of going to Vancouver Fashion Week and working really hard with a mentor in Denver. And at this point, I'm not there. And that's okay for now. Um, I'm not going to stop striving for my goals. I'm not going to stop working hard and I'm not going to put aside this fashion career because I didn't make my goal this year or this moment. That's okay. I'm still going to work hard. I just need to be more agile and I need to shift focus. I need to shift gears a little bit. It doesn't make me a failure as a person. It doesn't. It just means that it wasn't in the cards this year and all of the work that I've done in the past is not for nothing. I've learned a lot over the last few months and the last year or so when I was preparing for Vancouver Fashion Week. So I have more under my belt, more experience that I can then take to my next project, my next goal, my next expectation. I think it's silly of us to expect that everything is going to be perfect, that everything is going to work out exactly how we planned. You know, we're, that's not realistic. That's, that's a completely unrealistic goal. It's important though, that what we can say is no matter what happens, I'm going to learn from this experience. I am going to take what I learned and use it in the future. That way it's easier for me to attain my goals. My expectations are more realistic. And this changes day after day, year after year, lesson after lesson. You know, at some point you might reach a tipping point where you have to bump up your expectations and bump up your goals because you've exceeded your expectations. But sometimes there's a lull later and you just have to go, okay, well, there's a lull right now. I don't know what's causing it. Let me see if I can look into this and learn from it, but not disparage yourself because you've either you didn't meet your goal or it wasn't as successful as you thought it was going to be like just be kind kind to yourself this is very important for businesses that are new for companies that are new because there's so much that you don't know yet that you haven't learned yet and this is the same for me i've been going through that with my own fashion company I, you know, I got a pretty good following in my fiber arts company and I was trying to remind myself like, wow, I, I'm not gaining as many followers for fashion or my uh, other new company, The Character Chronicles. Um, I'm not gaining followers as quickly as I thought I would and why isn't it as successful as my fiber arts stuff? And then I remembered it took me years to build the following for my fiber arts career. It took me absolutely, not forever, but it took me a long time and it took a lot of concerted effort on my part. And you forget that when you're at a certain stage in a company and you have to remember that when you start something new again, you're kind of starting from scratch and that that's okay. And it's kind of exhilarating, even though it's also kind of scary at the same time that there's really nowhere for you to go except for up. It's just a matter of how quickly and how, how you do it. And that it's not a bad thing. 
to start from scratch. It's not a bad thing to not be meeting your expectations at first. Let's just learn from it. What can you do? What can you learn from this scenario? That's, that's the important thing in everything in life. What can you learn from this right here and right now? You know, I think thinking about this, I don't know, it makes me calm. It makes me feel less like a disappointment to myself or to my family or whoever. It makes me feel optimistic. It makes me feel like I can go forward with this knowledge and it's important to remind ourselves this. Like, I, I know this lesson, but I had to remind myself. And here I am trying to remind you. And I would like to bring Seeds of Creativity back. I felt disappointed in myself. I hadn't made a video in over a month and a half. But again, it's okay. <laughs> I did what I needed to do to not burn out. See, uh, you know, a couple of videos ago. It's okay. I'm here now. <laughs> I'm going to be doing more things in the future that I was or had been disappointed in the fact that I had kind of dropped the ball. But it's okay. I've learned. I'm learning. I'm going to keep learning. I'm not perfect. And that's okay. And that makes us who we are. So I hope you enjoy this kind of rambly video today. Um, I don't know when the next video will come out. Hopefully it'll be next week. And if it's not, that's fine. And if it is, great. I, you know, it's a realistic goal, I think, to have one next week. I don't think it's unrealistic. But also, we'll see what this next week holds. Life is changing by the minute in 2020. So I'm just going to do my best. And just you do your best too. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.